Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Feldstein, and I'm the founding and managing partner of Feldstein Family Law Group. Today, I will be discussing the significance of a separation agreement, even between two amicable and cooperative former spouses. That is, I will be discussing the need for a separation agreement, regardless of how well you and your former partner get along after the decision to separate from one another. A separation agreement is negotiated between the parties and can potentially settle all rights and obligations arising out of a common law relationship or marriage. Former spouses are provided with the closest thing to certainty, finality, and closure by entering into a separation agreement. Furthermore, a separation agreement provides structure to the party's relationship moving forward, a period of time referred to as post-separation. When parties choose not to enter into a separation agreement or resolve the issues through the courts after the breakdown of their relationship, many issues can linger on until a particular event occurs in the parties' lives. Whether such event relates to the party's children attending college or university, one of the parties becoming unemployed, the absence of a separation agreement can lead to further issues between former spouses upon such an event occurring. Who is to pay for the expenses related to the child's post-secondary education? Or in what proportion should each party contribute? A greater concern may occur after a heated argument between former spouses where the children are left in the center of such a conflict. Such a conflict may arise when one of the former spouses finds a new partner. Without a separation agreement in place, the other party may seek retroactive support. That is, they may request support dating back to the date of separation. Without any prior separation agreement, the party will have a further stressor when entering into this relationship with his new partner as they will do so without certainty or closure with respect to his or her past relationship. Further, without entering into a separation agreement, the limitation periods will continue to run. If the parties choose not to enter into such agreement, claims such as that to an equalization payment and division of property may expire. In such cases, the vulnerable party becomes taken advantage of regardless of the party's intentions upon separation. Although a separation agreement may be viewed as unnecessary between two amicable former spouses, the lapse of time between separation and the resolution of lingering legal issues only creates further difficulty. The very, very time parties should choose to enter into a separation agreement is when they are amicable with one another. Instead of back and forth between counsel, they can hash out the major details together and have counsel draft the final agreement. As such, proceeding to draft an agreement when the parties are cooperative and amicable reduces the legal cost of negotiating an agreement. I can tell you recently, I was talking to a couple of people I know who advised me they were getting along well with their former spouses and didn't want to enter into a separation agreement. My advice to them was, it is critical that they get an agreement. That way they know what their obligations are, they know what their rights are, and I encourage them to speak to a family law, law lawyer, whether it was a lawyer at my firm or somewhere else. Because in my opinion, you need to have a separation agreement so you can understand your obligations, you can understand how you can plan for the future, because until there's an agreement, you truly can't plan for the future. If you have any further questions regarding separation agreements, please visit our website at separation.ca. If you would like to speak with one of our family law lawyers, please call us for a consultation at 905-415-1636. Thank you for listening.